friends, let's dive into some exciting new papers this week. We're going to walk through how Mistral 7B produces its high-performance and efficient models, how to cost-effectively develop a smaller model from pruning a larger model, how does flash decoding work for long contest inference, how do large language models learn about rules and reduce hallucination? And finally, we're going to go through some of the other fun papers you might find interesting this week. Mistra 7B has been the hottest large language model in town for the past week. This week, they published a paper with more details. Let's take a look. Mistra 7B stands out for its high performance and efficiency. They outperformed Llama 2 13B on all benchmarks and beat Llama 34B on some benchmarks. They used group query attention and sliding window attention. Group query attention accelerates the inference speed, reduces memory requirements, allowing higher throughput. Sliding window attention handles longer sequences more effectively. So what is sliding window attention? In the traditional vanilla attention, each token can attend to all the previous tokens. For example, the token set can attend to the cat set. On can attend to the cat set on. For the sliding window attention, each token can only attend to a fixed number of tokens. Here, on can only attend to cat set on. They have this sliding window at each layer. Tokens outside of the sliding window can still influence next word prediction across layers. They found that the sliding window attention offers a 2x speedup. They also limit the cache size using a rolling buffer cache. Here are some examples where the cache size is 4. In this example, at time step i, the current word is on and is stored in the cache. The next word we have is the word the, which replaced the previous cache at this position. And then we have the word met replace the next cache. Again, results showed really good performance on Mr. 7B. They also fine-tuned this model and created a Mr. 7B instruct model which also outperforms other models, even larger ones. In this next section, they talk about how to guard real and do content moderation. Using this prompt, they were able to decline to answer 100% of the harmful questions. It's interesting that they showed this example question, how to kill a Linux process. Mistral provides the right answer, but Llama 2 declines to answer. This shows that Mistra 7B Instruct knows that this is not a harmful question and the model shouldn't decline to answer this question, so it's good. They were also able to use Mistra for content moderation to classify a prompt or its answer as one of these categories. I feel like this paper is very helpful, but it could include more details on the data set and their training process. If you'd like to check how Mistra compares with Llama 2 13B, go to this website and you can rate which model produces a better answer. Looking at the result, looks like Mistra 7B is winning so far. There are also so many fine-tuned versions of Mistra already. The SQL Coder 7B was fine-tuned on Mistra 7B and it outperforms GPT 3.5 Turbo for SQL generation tasks. Open Orca Mistra 7B is fine-tuned on their own data set and it ranks number one for all models smaller than 30B, which is really impressive. I hope by now we all know the importance of developing smaller but powerful models. However, building a model from scratch is very costly. This paper proposed that it's more cost-effective to develop a smaller model from pruning a larger model than train a model from scratch. They seek to address this question. Can we produce a smaller general purpose and competitive LLM by leveraging existing pre-trained LLMs while using much less compute than training one from scratch? Previously, pruning is a solution for compressing task-specific models. However, for general purpose LLMs, pruning results in performance degradation. Specifically, they identified two challenges. How can we decide on final pruned architectures that are strong in performance and efficient for inference? How can we continue pre-training the pruned model to reach desired performance? They proposed LLM sharing with two components. First is the targeted structure pruning, which prunes a source model to a specific target architecture. Second is dynamic batch loading, 
that loads training data from each domain in proportion to its rate of loss reduction. Specifically, here's what the target structure pruning looks like. In this example, our source model has three layers. Each layer has one multi-head attention module and one feedforward network. It has a hidden state dimension of six, four heads in each multi-dimension head, and each feedforward network has eight intermediate dimensions. We have a masking variable Z. The lighter colored cells are the pruned ones where Z equals zero. And then here is what the target model looks like after pruning. So how do they do the pruning? It's a constrained optimization problem where they search for a SAP network matching a target architecture while maximizing performance. They use a pair of Lagrange multipliers, which are the lambda and the phi here, to constrain each substructure, and then optimize this function with all substructures. The second stage is pre-training the pruned model to recover the model performance. However, they found that the loss reductions are different across domains. They use the red pajama dataset with seven domains. Their pruning preserves a great amount of knowledge in GitHub, but not in C4, for example. So they need to adjust domain proportions on the fly based on model performance. They update the weights for each domain for every M steps. Using the Llama 27B model as the source model, they developed two smaller models with 2.7 billion and 1.3 billion parameters, which outperforms publicly available models of comparable size. They also found that their pruned model have a higher inference throughput than other pruned models because in other models, different layers have different numbers of heads or intermediate size, introducing overhead. Overall, it's an interesting paper help us understand how to produce small large language models from a larger model with a low cost. This next paper is flash decoding for long context inference. Focusing on how flash decoding can significantly speed up attention during inference, bringing up to 8x faster generation for very long sequences. During decoding, we compute queries, multiply keys, take a softmax, and then multiply values. Here's another view of this, where the query and key result in a big attention matrix and by a matrix. Then you can do masking, softmax, dropout on it. And then you can finally multiply by value. This operation can be optimized with flash attention in training cases where the bottleneck is the memory bandwidth to read and write the intermediate results, which is the n by n attention matrix produced by Q and K and the operations on this matrix. As you can see here, the dropdown, softmax, and mask take a very long time. The idea of flash attention is to restructure this algorithm to load block by block as shown in this animation here, so that we can decompose large matrix operations into smaller ones. However, during inference, flash attention only use a small part of the GPU, especially when using long contexts. Flash decoding adds a new parallelism dimension to fully utilize the GPU. All of this is possible because the attention softmax can be calculated iteratively, meaning that when you calculate softmax of a matrix A, you can break it down into chunks and calculate softmax separately. And in flash decoding, it is used in both within splits like flash attention and across splits or parallelism. Benchmark the decoding throughput of Colama 34B and compare with PyTorch, Flash Attention, and Flash Transformer, they found that flash decoding unlocks up to 8x speedup in decoding speed for very large sequences. To use flash decoding, you can try out the flash attention and the Xformers packages. This next paper shows that large language model can learn rules and reduce hallucination in reasoning tasks. They proposed a hypothesis to theories framework that learns a rule library for reasoning with LLMs. They started the paper mentioning two challenges of LLM. One is hallucination. Another one is accuracy drop whenever the task deviates from requiring conventional knowledge. For example, arithmetic in a non-decimal system. Both are caused by a mismatch between the implicit knowledge pre-training the language model and the knowledge required for the task. They proposed hypothesis to theories framework with two stages. 
an induction stage and a detection stage. In the induction stage, for each training example, we ask the LLM to generate rules for answering the question and then verify from the ground truth answers. Here's an example of how it works. We have a set of arithmetic questions and we know the correct answer. We ask the language model to generate results with step-by-step -step explanations. We then extract the rule from the answers by searching string templates with regular expressions. Because we know the ground truth of each problem, we know if the generated answer are correct or not. We only collect rules that appear frequently and are associated more with correct answers. In the deduction stage, we prepend the rule library in the prompt and ask the LLM to try to use the provided knowledge whenever possible. There is a small detail here that it is hard to retrieve the correct rule because the large number of rules provided. So they used XML tagging to organize the rule sets into a hierarchy, and they asked the LLM to generate the text. Results showed that HTT outperforms chain of thought and leads to most prompting in both arithmetic problems and in relational reasoning problems. Compared to GPT 3.5, GPT 4 can generate better rules and result in better performance. They also found that this method significantly reduces hallucination. For the base 16 arithmetic problems, they reduced hallucination from 22% to 3%. Overall, this paper shows that large language models can learn rules and apply them in reasoning problems. There are so many other papers this week, I would like to mention some of them briefly. LAVA, the open source large multimodal model, has made some modifications this week and achieved state-of-the-art across 11 benchmarks. LAVA probably deserves a separate video to talk about. I'll see if I have time. This is a review paper on how do large language models capture ever-changing world knowledge. The methods include knowledge editing, continual learning, memory enhanced, retrieval enhanced, and internet enhanced methods. This paper introduced partially binarized LLM, which can achieve extreme low bit quantization while maintaining performance. This open web math paper introduced a massive open data set containing every math document found on the internet with latex equations. Okay, so that's it for the week. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.